Hello everybody and welcome to Super Citizen TV, the only television show in prime time that features conservative viewpoints. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Pat McDonald. I have some very good news and I feel good about it. President Donald J. Trump has been named the most admired man in America for the first time. This is after three years of attacks and assaults and lies about this man at the Gallup poll. This is the Gallup poll. Uh, for many years in a row, it was President Barack Obama, but now it's President Trump. And you know, we really have a special kind of feeling we have to have for this president because he's done something for us, especially when you think about the holiday season, he has given us gifts. And what I mean by gifts, presidents do certain things that are beneficial to the country and uh, that we're proud of, but he has given us gifts. These are things that were unexpected, that we just took for granted. And he, and his wisdom and his vision, he explained it to us. Let me give you a couple of these gifts that you might not think of this way. First of all, <clears throat> he has pointed out to us our real enemies. Take, for example, China. Under President Bush, uh, Obama, and Clinton, China was our friend. They were not our adversary. They were our trading partner. But they were stealing jobs. They were stealing businesses. They were stealing secrets from our economy, from our businesses, trade secrets. And they were building a tremendous military and traveling around the world, exerting powerful influence in other countries, all against America. But our politicians kept telling us we have to have engagement. Well, President Trump told us the truth. We were victims of the big lie for many years, and it hurt us. But President Trump told us the truth. They are our enemy. They are out to get us. They are out to be like the Soviet Union was. They are our adversary. And he awakened a lot of Americans and even some Democrats. Another gift he's given us in that same vein is Iran. What did President Obama tell us about Iran? We can work with them. He tried to bribe them with $150 billion in our tax money, and then he signed a phony treaty that did not even go to the Senate for ratification that they just, you know, it was a big lie again. They just kept building missiles, building nuclear power. So the president said, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to put sanctions on them. We're going to bring their economy down. We're going to tear up this phony treaty, and we're going to look at Iran as what they really are, our enemy. And that was a gift to the American people. Now, you know, you can talk about other things like uh, the appeasement. America first, that's a gift to America. Too many of our presidents and politicians always talked about appeasement. And I think the greatest gift is the corrupt media. For many years, all of us who were conservatives and I think people who had common sense, we always thought about the media as being liberal. Oh, that's the liberal media. That's what you expect. That's CNN. Well, President Trump gave us a gift. He attacked the media and he pointed out that they were not only left and liberal, they were corrupt. And beyond being corrupt, the fake news was part of a co-conspiracy with the Democrats and the radical left. They were part of the mob that supposedly had resistance against the president, but really resistance against America and the people of this country. So. You know, the Democrats, you see it right now, uh, as far as corruption, we see it all the time. We saw it with the impeachment. But the Democrats and the media are on the same page. They all belong to the Ayatollah's fan club. It's as if the president and America's fighting forces did something wrong, and the Ayatollah and Iran are the victims. He also taught us about the swamp. You know, the permanent government, the CIA, the Defense Department, the State Department. And that, you know, they thought they were privileged. They ran the country. They were the rulers of America, not the elected president or the elected members of Congress. He taught us that the swamp was dangerous, and that was important. Another thing he gave us a gift was on the economy. President Obama said the economy was dead. It was done. There would never be any more manufacturing jobs. Things are going to be different. President Trump gave us the gift of the big truth, a million 
manufacturing jobs in his three years as president. So he told us all about the enemy and the agenda against us. He taught us that, and that was a gift. He gave us the gift of the big truth, not the big lie. You know, in the front of this program, every time we come on and on my radio show, we always say truth and knowledge guarantee liberty. This is an example. If you know the truth and you have the knowledge, you will always support liberty. And that's the greatest gift that President Trump has given to, this, to, these, to the people of this nation. That's the greatest gift, truth and knowledge, because that will guarantee our liberty. I'm Pat McDonough. At Mr. Freedot Shop, we have smart designs for smart people. Why try to explain yourself to deranged liberals? Let your apparel say exactly what's on your mind. Check out our line at Mr. Freedot Shop. And remember, wear what you think. Wear what you think. Wear what you think. What you think. Here is an opinion piece from Danielle Brossard. It takes sort of a holiday spirited look at the assassination of that evil man in Iran and also points out that uh, the real leader in America is somebody you would never think would be that great leader. So the big news last week is that on Thursday, January 2nd, General Soleimani was killed in a U.S. airstrike. Now, some people think it had something to do with two days prior to that, uh, Iraqi supporters of Hezbollah stormed the U.S. embassy in Baghdad. And four days prior to that, Hezbollah, Hezbollah attacked one of our military base, bases, killing one American and wounding, wounding several others. Now, while I think that that did have something to do with us killing General Soleimani, I think the real reason that this happened is because Christmas and New Year's fell on a Wednesday this year. Uh, now, hear me out on this. So any other normal year, the week between Christmas and New Year's is very strange for everybody. Um, you wake up. You're hungover. Every day you wake up that week, you wake up and it's already dark. You're, you're hungover. You're filled with two dozen Christmas cookies. You're wearing your pajamas and a blanket with sleeves. You're psychologically damaged from spending the week with relatives. Now think about what that effect has on Trump, okay? He's down in Mar-a-Lago. He spent way too much time with Melania's relatives. They've all got their hand out for money. He's like thinking to himself, I cannot listen to one more story about these people's grandkids or I'm going to kill myself. So January 2nd, he's roaring to get back to work. He's waking up early. He gets into his office and he's trying to get somebody on the phone. But the rest of Washington is still on a four day vacation. They're not even thinking about going to back, back to work until maybe Tuesday afternoon. So he gets up on Thursday. The only person in all of the government that's even working is the military. So he gets them on the phone and he goes, okay, so what do you got going on? What can we do? General Soleimani's at the airport. Oh my God, this is great. Blow his ass up. So he's happy as a clam. He's thinking, I may have just saved my weekend. Think about how bored Trump was that week. He's thinking, let's give the press something to do. I would also like to point out that um, the fact that they attacked our base and stormed the embassy on the week of our, like, Holy Week, our Christmas week, you don't find that to be rude and, and on purpose. It's kind of like us uh, dropping pork sandwiches on Mecca during Ramadan. That's how rude that is. Now, of course, Trump is getting backlash for killing General Soleimani. Um, suddenly, everybody loved the guy. He was great. Uh, and Iran has released statements saying that they're furious and they're vowing revenge. First of all, Iran, I understand you're angry. You're always angry. Also, Iran has, has declared that they're going to attack one of our leaders since we killed one of theirs. Um, so if I could speak directly to Iran, what I'd like to say is, you know who really runs things around here in America? Chuck Schumer. <laughs> If you have an opinion on politics, we'd love to hear from you. Today, Mr. Free, it's your turn on my turn. We keep hearing how this is the most important election of our lives all the time. Sean Hannity, right? 2016 was the most important election of our lives. 2020 is. 
We are staring straight in the eye of evil. When we hear the Democrats talk, we understand. We are looking at the destruction of our society. Donald Trump is raising money in record numbers. It's wonderful. But something is equally or more important to that, and that is boots on the ground. Okay, I ask you, contact your local Republican clubs, conservative clubs, Trump clubs. Become a member. Okay, get active. Talk to your local, your state, Republican parties. Ask them what you can do to get Republicans elected. Reach out to me, Mr. Free. I will take personal responsibility in finding you a place where you can help get ele uh, Republicans elected. You can find me all over social media. Message me, email me, phone, text, mrfree.shop, mrfree.us, mrfree. This design, triumph, I did intend it for Donald Trump. But it is a positive, hopeful message for all Republicans. It's uplifting the election 2020. It's time for us all to stand up for a Trump victory, for Republicans to win, and for freedom to triumph and contact Super Citizen USA. They want your help. They need your help. Us all to band together. Join the club, the Super Citizen Club. Let your voice be heard across the state. For just $20 a year, you'll receive inside access to our social media network, direct delivery of our Super Citizen newsletter, and advance notice and discounts to our special events and more. Call 410-238-0025. Join the club, the Super Citizen Club, today. Can't sleep, anxiety, or aches and pains keeping you up at night? Well, a new study proves CBD works. Start sleeping, stop aching with safe, effective from Bee Tree CBD. New medical study proves CBD is effective treating sleeplessness, anxiety, PTSD, depression, pain, and achy muscles. Safe, effective, start sleeping, stop aching with safe, effective from Bee Tree CBD. And now a commentary from our special guest whose voice may sound familiar since he's frequently on WCBM radio, talk radio, Pastor David Lewis. Happy New Year. It may be a new year, but as Israel's King Solomon said almost 3,000 years ago, there's nothing new under the sun. And what we can draw from that is that evil continues to exist in the year 2020. It's part of human nature. We're born in sin and we continue to sin all of our lives. And that's evil. I'm not a politician. I'm a pastor. And so I look at things from a godly perspective. Let's understand this. God is in charge. He is sovereign and he is providentially ruling his universe and everything that is in it. So it's to him who we need to look for help. We learn about him. We hear from him through the Bible, God's holy word. And he hears from us through the avenue of prayer. We have found over the years that as humans, we cannot legislate morality. Also, we can't really change people's minds. Have you ever had an argument with someone where it changed their entire way of thinking? We who love the Lord hate the sins of abortion and same-sex marriage, both planks, by the way, of the Democrat Party's platform. We're not going to change the minds of the politicians or those who vote for them. You've seen the effects and the results of that up close for the last five decades in Baltimore City. No, the only one who can change a person's heart and save us from our sin is God. Jesus tells us in Matthew 5, to pray for our enemies. So instead of fighting with the liberals this year, I have decided I am going to pray for them. Resolve with me, if you will, in 2020 to choose an enemy, be it an enemy of our country, an enemy of the Lord, 
maybe your next door neighbor who you've been arguing with over the back fence for the last 20 years and ask God to change their heart for the good. I'm praying for Nancy D'Alessandro Pelosi. Other than crab cakes, I don't know that we have anything in common. But imagine the passion and the energy she could bring to our side if the Lord opened her eyes to see the light from our lips to God's ears. People ask me where I come up with my material. They say, how in the world do you think of that stuff? Well, a lot of the times it's from my wife. Miss Jeannie tells me what she thinks. And this one came from the food store. I was standing in line waiting to check out and I heard the person in front of me say, I think we should get rid of the electoral college. And I grumbled, but didn't say anything. And I, but I thought to myself, get rid of the electoral college. What do you think? Do you think we should get rid of the Electoral College? Well, if you think we should, think about this. Did you know in Los Angeles there are four million people? Four million people is more populous than 30 other states. Without an Electoral College, the city of Los Angeles, who was represented by that darling of everyone, Adam Schiff, would have a more important role as to whom our president should be than 30 other states. Now do you think we should get rid of the Electoral College? Hello everybody and welcome to the round table. Uh, we're going to talk about the assassination of Solomon, but uh, I want to tell you, warn you ahead of time of course that this show was taped on uh, the 6th of January and it's airing now today on the 11th, so a lot, of, a lot may have happened between that time, but it's still something I think that we all have an opinion on and we would like to talk about. And Danielle, you had done some work on this in your uh, commentary and your thoughts on, was this, you know, here's what I like, this is okay. what I like. All of the lefties, the uh, politicians, the media, the whole mob, they're all co-conspirators, they all sound like they're the Ayatollah's fan club. Yeah, they do. And uh, I mean, it's so embarrassing. How far have we gone in this nation to the point where they think that somebody like Iran and the Ayatollahs and this, and this uh, chief terrorist are worthy of some kind of positive comment where our president and our military and our nation should be attacked? Well, if Trump killed him, he's got to be a good guy, right? Mm -hmm. he's, he's got to be, whatever Trump does, it's he the opposite of that. Went from evil to good. Absolutely. Yeah. Suddenly going, you know, I met Soleimani at a dinner party once. He was lovely. Yeah. Dressed well. Yeah. Swell it's a nice dancer. guy. Great beard. Yeah, swell dancer. And all of the uh, presidential candidates, of course, are taking the same position as, uh, Sh uh, Sh uh, what is his name, Chucky Schumer. And uh, the, the media, to me, it's so obvious that the conspiracy is, you know, the mob is so together. They all are like talking points, whether it's CNN and, and, and Don Lemonhead or, or uh, you know, it's MSNBC. and Anderson that, Cooper. They're all on the same page. Yeah, They're they all are. on the same page. It's so obvious. Well, it's always six to one, five to one. On CNN? No, it's more like 10 to one. No, it's five to one. It's ABC, NBC, oh, CBS, okay. MSNBC, oh, yeah, CNN. Yeah, yeah. As far it's, as it's all against uh, Fox and may, sometimes OAN. I haven't heard uh, the Democratic candidates for president saying anything about Soleimani yet. Yes, they have. They, they have? The same talking points. What's Number their one, new campaign? We would have done nothing. Yes, we would have been yes. like the Obama. Oh, right. we, we He'd like still the, be alive we like if we Obama. were in charge. Yes. Yeah, we like the Obama plan yeah. where we give them $150 billion in bribe money and we give them a phony treaty that the Senate never passed and we expect them to respect it and adhere to it, which forget about it. They're not going to do that. Well, if he was planning to do something, as I believe he was, and according to uh, most people, they believe he was do about to do something, had Trump done nothing, they would have chided Trump, oh, Trump for doing yeah. nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So now he fixed it so that didn't happen. So now they're giving him a hard time. Actually, they would have thought, oh, I wish it was us who did nothing. Right. And That's they even they even had the audacity to compare it to Benghazi. Can you imagine? In Benghazi, they were Where the troops Americans were told were to stand down. Yes, everyone was told to stand down. The Italian Air Force Base was less than an hour away from the Benghazi uh, airport and where they could have landed in, in, in Libya. Yes, and they were told five times, stand down, stand down, and, stand down. And, they, and, and they finally went over anyway, against orders. Right, and when these guys attacked our embassy in Iran, Trump An said, hour later. 750 yeah, troops, do it. 
And they left that embassy faster than well, uh, well, the libs in the media Grant will never Richmond. admit to the fact that they took down our drone. He did nothing. He said, I'm not yeah. doing anything. Let's negotiate. He was patient. He was. They destroyed half of the oil capability of the Saudis, our allies in right. the area. We did nothing. He did nothing, okay? So uh, the, the ship the in the Hormuz. Hormuz. Right, yeah. They bombed the ship in, in the Strait of Hormuz. He's been patient time and time right. again. And then they finally kill Soleimani. He's like, what? I can't believe he did that. Are yeah, you he kidding? He's such a nice man. And also they say that we don't have a strategy. He has a strategy. They don't have a strategy. Win. Yeah, the strategy is, strategy is win, but the president, president depends a great deal on the military, and I think he should. He is eliminating, he is eliminating half of his national security team. I had no idea. It's 800 people. I always thought John Bolton was the national security advisor, and that's it. It's 800 people involved in the National Security Agency. In every CIA station around the world, and every embassy around the world, there is an NS. Hey, a national security agent there. In there yeah, uh, and the they're embassy. all Obamites. And he says he wants to cut it in half, cut it down to 400. Can he replace them? With, he doesn't, he doesn't want he to replace them. He just thinks they're, he they're useless. He don't need them. And, uh, he, he, doesn't, he wants to get rid of these Obama people. The deep state, the permanent government, whether it's the State Department or whether it's the CIA or whether it is anything, all of these Obama people, and not only Obama people, Clinton people, are in these positions. And they're misleading the president. They're misinforming. I mean, this Vionovich during the yeah. impeachment. God, you know, what we heard about her, not during the impeachment, not during the media, but if you read the conservative news mm -hmm. blogs, uh, she would do nothing as far as right. the corruption. No, there's no corruption. All they want to do is keep their job through, through every administration. They're know. just lifers. They're government employee lifers. They don't care who's president. Well, I, they just I, want to stay there. I don't know why the lock, president lock the retained these people. When either. Obama became president, one of his first acts was to fire 108 embassy uh, heads, the heads of the ambassadors. Trump loves firing people. He, why doesn't well, he Well, Trump, Trump it. kept them. He should have fired all the ambassadors. The, the, the news didn't say anything about Obama. Well, the only thing that Trump did, he, he was lax in doing this, okay? And we happen to know He's got a lot uh, Valerie of Valerie and I happen to know a person who is one of his chief appointers in Washington. She's in charge of finding people and appointing them. And we talked to her last summer over at the White House uh, annex building in her office, and she was having a very tough time. And she was saying a lot of these liberal Congress people, and especially these U.S. senators, are blocking people by really harassing them when she puts them in the pipeline to take these positions. So the Trump administration it. was having a very tough time. Now, we know that for a fact publicly about the judges until finally Mitchell, uh, uh, Mitch, uh, oh, okay. uh, Mitch McConnell said, no, we're going to do the nuclear strike. 51 votes, that's enough. No matter what the, states, the senator from that state says, we're going to appoint a person. So now they've appointed, as Frank pointed out on a previous show, 187 judges. So we moved forward. That was fantastic. By the time he's finished in five years, he'll replace the whole federal judiciary, or at least a majority of it. So we, we're having problems doing that. We haven't been aggressive enough. And uh, Republicans, though, are notorious for not being aggressive in clearing out the bureaucracy or the swamp, as we now call it. There are too many liberals in the permanent government. That's true. And that hurts us. So, uh, you know. Uh, when we elect Republicans, though, they, they still don't do anything. They still don't have, have the case, guts to do what we sent them there to do. The, uh, well, I think a lot of them don't really understand that the State Department is filled with Democrats who will do anything to hurt the Republican who's in charge. And they're all globalists, and you know, and, and you know what was obvious to me? When the president went to the ball game to see the Nationals play. When he got booed. And the entire stadium booed. I thought, there's the D.C. That's the swamp. Right. There's right. the swamp. Because but everyone there lives in D.C. Do. Everybody <laughs> works in D.C. That is to pass out pink slips to everyone in the stadium. <laughs> As they here's a hot, hey, you're here's fired, a hot and dog, you're and here's your napkin. Here's your, you're fired, <laughs> the napkin you're all pink fired. Slip. And then that would get rid of the deep state. And then he went to a college game, and he was uh, cheered. cheered. That's right, because they were not yeah. there. Well, yeah, anyway. so it's, it's, it's very, very interesting. Uh, Listen, I think he's doing an amazing job. Well, first of all, this guy that was assassinated, and the other guy, he got a twofer, actually, out of it, and he got some other leaders. Yes. You know, what they have been doing is an aggressive That's war. That's what you get for carpooling. Well, okay. <laughs> it's an aggressive yeah. war Should have against, gotten an Uber. It's an aggressive war not only against us but our allies. It's an aggressive war against Israel. It's an aggressive war against the Saudis. What other president has ever brought Saudi Arabia, 
Egypt, the Emirates, and other countries together to coalition with Israel. That's a gift right there. So now they're all on alert to go after Iran. Iran is the bad guy in the whole bunch, okay? That's the bad apple right there. Yep. And they're proxies. You have Hezbollah in Lebanon, north of uh, Israel, wants to attack Israel. And then you have Hezbollah, Iraq. And what's mm -hmm. happening in Iraq is the, the Shias, you have the Sunnis and the Shias. The Sunnis, uh, uh, Saddam Hussein was a Sunni. The, all of the people in Iran are Shias, and they hate one another. They hate more. There's the great Satan to each of them, but they have taken over the prime, uh, the they parliament. Have, They've taken over the parliament. So That's, we fought <laughs> to free them from a dictator, and now we have given the country. But remember, right. you talk about Trump. Obama pulled all of our troops out, 10, yeah. and, that, troops and he was out. the right. father of ISIS. Yeah. He created Foolish. ISIS. He created Foolish. that gap for ISIS vacuum. in order to form. But a, you know what? Grow. And you can go back further. Democrats are just historically are the worst when it comes to foreign policy because who started this Iranian mess? Jimmy Carter. Yeah. Jimmy Carter, when he stopped CIA covert activities yep. to help keep the Shah propped up. And he withdrew funding for weapons. For he the Shah. did withdraw. That's right. And he, he told the CIA to stand down. Sound familiar? Stand down. Around that's when the Shah. Jimmy Carter and the just Shah, humiliated him. The Shah was a loyal ally for so many years. He, was huge. he deserved so much better. The ears in, in Iran were pointed directly at Russia. The radar, we were picking up intelligence from Russia for years, mm. thanks to the Shah. Oh yeah, I we had a, we had a lot of uh, yes. we had a lot of assets in Iran. The, and when he wanted to come here, the poor man was dying of cancer. And he wanted to come here and Jimmy Carter, the, the great Christian said, "Oh no, no, no. No, we won't keep it." After the man spent a lifetime being loyal to the United States. Terrible tragedy. I'm wrong. Listen, Iran has three oil fields. The economy because of Trump's sanctions is in the toilet. The people in Iran the ordinary folks are in rebellion against the Ayatollah and his gang. That's true. Uh, we can take out, probably within a half an hour, all three oil fields. Once again, thank you for tuning in and viewing Super Citizen TV. We are on every other Sunday at 10 a.m. on a variety of channels, which you can find on our website, which is supercitizenusa.com. We'd like to be on every week, and you can help us to do that if you visit the website there is a uh, PayPal system there where you can contribute. You can become a member for just $20. And for those of you who do not uh, have an internet or a uh, computer, you can call my office at 410-238-0025, that same number that you've seen throughout the program. I'm Pat McDonough. I want to thank Danielle Broussard and Mr. Frank Marchant for their help with this program. Tune in again the next time to Super Citizen TV.